Another mystery device from a Holland, and this uh, came from Michelle, who also sent loads of strup waffle syrup waffles, uh, because it's such a popular thing in Holland. He also sent some strup waffle liqueur. I'll just taste this and tell you exactly what it tastes like. I've already tasted it, as you may notice from the fact the bottle is already open and somewhat lower than it should be. So, uh, tasting it, it tastes like the caramelly, sort of brown sugary interior of those waffles with a touch of cinnamon and the sort of doughy flavour of the actual waffle dough. They're quite nice. So I've been eating a lot of syrup waffles uh, recently. It's quite far too many syrup waffles recently. So here's the story behind this lighthouse. Michelle bought one of these and it's solar powered, it uh, charges up during the day and at night time uh, it lights up and it Apparently it just rotates all the time, a very low power sort of motor system for rotating. But he liked it a lot and he got some more and uh, they lit up but they didn't rotate. And when he opened it up he found that there were just bits completely missing from it. So let's uh, investigate this. Now it's notable that this sort of bayonet caps in and there is a hole here for drainage but I'm not convinced. Uh, there's a matching hole at the bottom here. I'm not convinced it would drain that well. This is the sort of thing that Maybe the reason they didn't include the motor was because water gets in it gummed up in some way. So let's take a look inside this. Uh, where is my spudger? The spudger is the best way to get the top off. I've already noticed that uh, he supplied this with a pink LED inside it. I think that was his little joke about the channel being very pink biased. So uh, inside the two solar panels are in parallel, going down to the electronic circuitry and then it's got the, the leads coming up to the LED. So nothing really much to see there. I wonder what the little vent uh, holes are there for. Drainage, perhaps? Or even something else like sound? I'm not sure. Maybe they do a version that does sound effects as well. That would be incredibly annoying. Uh, taking the bottom off this, three screws hold this uh, base plate on. And once you get inside, you initially think that it should be working because the motor's in there. It looks like the motor's in there. And, uh, oh, I just popped a wire off. And when you uh, take it further apart, let's take all the screws out. That's always a good option, isn't it? So let's whack all these screws out and the motor off. In fact, is that going to come out as it is? No, it's, well, it's almost going to come out. Oh, the other one, of course, is the pillar for the cables that are going through. Okay, to get the motor out we're going to have to pull the uh, little reflector bit off and open this up. Now, the circuit board in these should look like this. There should be the little kicker coil for the motor and various other components like transistors and capacitors. But what's actually inside this is very different. If I pop it open. Basically speaking, a blank circuit board, an unwound coil, and just the little motor shaft. And the whole reason they're using this is purely as the battery holder and the shaft just to hold this in position. It's basically they've cheaped out and they've just left everything out. So uh, let's take a look and see. Well, Michelle actually got in contact with the manufacturer of the motor. Uh, and it turned out they were available very cheaply. It's a fairly standard item, and they said, yeah, sometimes they ask for them uh, with the motors and sometimes they ask them without. It just might be a cost thing, it might be a reliability thing. So if you open this up, then you find... Oh, cogwheels everywhere. Oh, cogwheels absolutely everywhere. You find the main output cogwheel, uh, a gearing cogwheel, and then the motor uh, rotor itself, which is quite a heavy little device. It's got a metal washer in the back. I don't know if that's just for field enhancement or if it's just um, for extra weight because it does have good mass. And then quite a heavily wound coil and then the circuitry. The reason for the three wires is that the red and black are literally connected to the battery terminals and to make the circuitry run you have to connect the red to the yellow. So in this case the little switch that disconnects it when it's being shipped would actually have the red coming from the battery uh, and then the output would be the uh, positive going to the solar power circuitry plus also to the yellow so that when you turn this on it would connect this to the battery as well and it would start running. And it just 
just runs 24-7. The current, because I've tested it, is extremely low. It's something like half a milliamp to run this little motor. Uh, the circuitry looks quite interesting. It's just two transistors and some capacitors. And you know what? I think I should reverse engineer that. I think I'm going to do that right now. One moment, please. Well, that is absolutely not what I was expecting. I was expecting a little, a sort of, one transistor was going to be driving the sort of main coil and there was going to be a feedback winding like you get with the pendulum systems, but it's absolutely not that. It appears to be a two-phase motor with the two windings connected, uh, one in one direction, one in the other effectively. And they're connected to what is more or less a complete A-stable multivibrator with the only slight variation being that instead of, uh, well, if you consider, what was that circuit? Where is that circuit I had recently? There it is. I looked at this circuit recently, the one that flashes the LEDs, just toggles them backwards and forwards. It's that type of circuit. But in place of the LEDs, it's effectively got the windings, one with one polarity, one with the other. And there's also one other component here, uh, which connects a one microfarad capacitor between the collector of one transistor to its base. I'm not sure if that's to encourage it to start off initially. It might be a sort of booster to start it. I'm not really sure. The component values are 220K resistors, quite high value, uh, 22 microfarad capacitors, and the little rotor here, I've tested the magnet, and it has three distinct pairs of poles around it. So six sections, magnetic sections, north-south, north-south, north-south. Very odd indeed. And now I've taken a look at this, I kind of want to know what the waveform is, because how does it start? Does it just run at a fixed frequency and rely on the sort of this somehow matching the frequency? I would have thought it would just vibrate backwards and forwards at this at high frequency. I wouldn't have thought it would rotate. Is there some feedback effect from these windings that kind of, I'm not sure. The only way to check this out, I think, is to crack out the oscilloscope and probe this. So let's uh, crack out the oscilloscope and probe it. I think the phrase deceptively simple comes to mind for this circuit because for what seems to be just a simple A-stable multivibrator with two motor windings basically connected to the uh, collectors of the transistors, it displays some quite interesting characteristics. For instance, I've got the oscilloscope connected between the zero volt rail and the collectors of both the transistors. And if you look at the waveform, when I'm holding it still, I've got a little tape flag in the motor here just to show its rotation when it is rotating, but I'm holding it still at the moment. And you can see that every two seconds, roughly, it tries to kick and start the motor. And if I let go of that now, and I change the time base, to reflect the speed that it's actually going to go up to. Then as the waveform increases and you see it's sort of stabilizing, then there's a very distinct pattern of the uh, three pairs of poles. Two of them are showing a much great larger waveform, but one of them is showing a distinctively different waveform. I wonder if that's because it's got a stronger magnetic field or a weaker magnetic field in that particular pole. And I wonder if that's deliberate or just a manufacturing defect, or is it because I was probing around that little rotor plate with a great big magnet trying to find uh, where the poles were and what the uh, polarity was. So that's uh, quite an interesting little arrangement. I've never come across a, an unstable an A-stable multivibrator res responding to its load in that sort of way. This is also a good time to introduce our new toy, the Keysight Oscilloscope, which Keysight generously supplied for our technical entertainment. They actually offered me an absolutely hugely over-the-top one, uh, and I declined it because it was actually, it was more in the league of EEV blog. It was beyond the reach of people like us. Uh, however, well, until we get a job and then we can like choose big expensive toys then in this sort of lab sort of environment. But uh, this is a more down to earth one that is actually within the range of a enthusiastic dabbler who wants to actually get good uh, locks on waveforms. And I have to say, I mentioned the locks on waveforms because compared to the old one, 
This one has much better software and it really does lock onto waveforms a lot better. It produces much more consistent results. It's a very nice toy indeed. So this will be making more appearances in the future. I've actually got it jacked up on plastic shot glasses at the moment because unfortunately my bench, because I film my videos top down, uh, I, it's not the ideal orientation for displaying the oscilloscope. So if I display it in the future in the same style, it's going to be just propped up to let the fan uh, ventilate it properly while the stuff will be off to the side while we analyse its technical waveforms. But yes, it's uh, quite an interesting little circuit, this. So that just leaves the task of rebuilding this little motor and uh, putting it all back together. And the hardest bit, I think, is going to be finding where the screws go because there are three of a smaller size. And for the bigger size, I'm pretty sure there should be five of the bigger size, but I may have lost one already. But that's OK. Lighthouses don't need every single screw to hold them together. So let's put this together first, and the way it goes together is the gearbox, this one goes in first. Now, do you notice how this has a little tang on the side of it? The reason for that is that in some of these little gearboxes, they have a little plastic blade that matches that tang. And the purpose of that, I think it goes on this. The purpose of that, have you seen those uh, clocks with the rotating sort of gold uh, sort of weight in the bottom that rotates one direction, then the other? And you get the original mechanical ones, you wind them up and they'd run for months. They've got a glass dome over them. And then you get the electronic one that just runs uh, backwards and forwards. And what actually happens is that this gear in here hits uh, a little stop. And it basically, it means it, it goes in one, basically one revolution, one direction, hits the stop, reverses and goes in the op opposite direction because these things are non-directional. They can go in both directions. So uh, let's not mix the cogwheels up. Let's uh, put the next cogwheel in, which is this one, which goes with the smaller inner cog down the way to make the other one that's in already, the main one. And this is by far the trickiest cogwheel because nothing really holds it straight. Then goes this uh, weighted flywheel, magnetic flywheel, which goes in there. And then this is where, if everything goes to plan, when I clip this on, and it only goes round one way, it goes round that way. Either, when I clip this on, either the shaft will spin freely and it won't work, or you'll hear it revving up like that, in which case it's all gone together and the uh, wheels have popped into the correct positions, which is ideal. There's little sort of conical shaft supports that they line up with. So that's that ready. So we'll put this in here. And it's got two supports that it's supposed to bridge. Um, where are they going to go? That's going to go there. There they are. So let's uh, pop some screws in to hold that in place. These screws are quite rusty. I wonder if they're rusty out the factory or that's just been stored in damp places. Then again, it's a lighthouse. So they would be rusty, wouldn't they? And then we'll deduce which wires go where. Keep in mind the yellow wire is the one that actually switches the motor on and the red and black are really just uh, tapped off the battery. So in this case they're being used to power the little solar LED light as well. Oh, uh, that screw has just completely missed. That's a bad start. Let's try that again, shall we? That feels better. Now I can mount the whirly lighthousey type bit on it, the little rotating beacon bit. Ooh. Uh, that's good enough, I think. That looks nice enough. Uh, then this dome goes over it. And then this goes on like this. With the LED hopefully not fouling that. Is that going to rotate freely? I'm not really sure. The LED looks very close. To, no, it looks all right, actually. It looks okay. So let's get these pillars into their respective slots that they're supposed to go into. They all have to go in at once, which is a bit tricky. And we'll put some screws into those to hold them in place. I'm guessing maybe the big screws, maybe this will make loud crunchy noises and the plastic will split. Let's put a couple in and see what happens. So one goes in there. Uh, one of these shafts is holding the wires. Now, I have noticed one thing, they, the, the whole shaft rotating. Uh, 
maybe that's the small screws. I got a horrible feeling that might be the small screws. Okay, let's back off and uh, put the small screws in there. I've noticed uh, they've got four wires going up the shaft. They could have actually just done it with two because uh, the negative for the LED and the solar panel are pretty much common. Oh, that's better. Yep, I think that's the correct sequence. I'll just say it's the correct sequence of screws anyway. I think this will work. It's going to be very camp if it does work because it is still fitted with a pink LED. It's going to be the Gay Light House of Sin. Right, it's looking pretty good. So now we've got the switch, which is feeding this circuit. Uh, so on the other terminal of the switch, we want... Uh, this is the main battery feed, so it's going to one leg of the switch. It's going to the common of the switch in the middle, so let's uh, solder that on. I'll tin the lead. Oh, I just dropped a battery pack. It's all right. So I'll tin that lead and I'll tin that connection. And we'll solder them together. Oh, that's a bit footy already. Let's see how that goes. That looks okay. Now, I could solder the... Um, yellow lead, which is going to power the motor, from the other pin here, but I might actually just take it onto the circuit board. So let's put the yellow circuit lead onto the circuit board, where that uh, other red one from the switch goes. So I'll tin the lead again. I'll flow some new solder onto the circuit board, and the original wire on the circuit board will then immediately pop off, because that happens. Watch this. I'll try and flow onto that connection there very quickly without actually letting the other one melt. Let's see how we go here. That looks like a result. I'll just crop the little tail off that. So, um, right, and that just leaves the negative to go on to this blob of all the negatives, including the black and the white going up to the uh, top of the light. So this is where that will almost certainly pop off when I try to solder it. So I'll tin this wire. Um, and I'll try and tin this, but these wires are going to pop off. I may have to just strip them and twist them all together. Yeah, it's popped off. I may just strip them and twist them all together. That's, that sounds like a good idea. And flow some fresh solder onto that to get the juicy flux goodness and the lead goodness as well. Is that actually designed to take a wee switch across that position? No, it's not. So let's crop these leads down to size and strip them and join the black onto their little party. So let's crop that, and that, and that to get the stripping tool, my preferred stripping tool, which is the Unior stripper, which is actually set for a completely different wire size, so may take a bit of effort to strip these. Let's see if I can strip this without pulling, put too much strain in that white wire. Okay, so let's twist these together and put some solder on them. And theoretically, at that point, the lighthouse should have been resurrected. It should have actually been made fully operational again. These little uh, turntables are often used in the little tiny, well, these little motors are often used in the solar turntables. The ones that just have, well, they're designed for jewellery displays or window displays and they basically have a little uh, turntable with solar panels around it, and it just takes the tiniest amount of light to make them rotate. They're really quite annoying when you have them uh, in your house because they just make this whirly rotating noise all the time at the slightest sniff of daylight through the window. So let's uh, get this connection on, stick a battery in, and we'll see if everything works okay. 
this is looking fairly promising. Should I put it together first or should I leave it open? I think I'll leave it open. So let's grab a battery. This is where smoke might come out. Uh, I was hoping that was going to start rotating. Oh no, it might be the switch is off. Is that going to help? Is it going to start rotating? Oh, another thing. These have to be pointing down to rotate. Let's see, is this sort of... Yeah, that is actually working now. These uh, turntables, if you... The motors, if you tip them upside down, they sort of skid to halt after a while. It just seems the things are optimised for being in one direction. So this is rotating. And if I turn this off and I cover... Oh, there it goes. Uh, and I unlock the intensity setting on the phone. There we go. That's quite nice, isn't it? It's quite a nice visual effect. It's not too fast, the rotation, is it? That's quite a nice visual effect. I will say, while playing around with this, uh, the just the reflector rotating its own is quite actually quite nice. So I'm just going to put this on the lighthouse now and we'll see how the whole thing looks. That actually looks quite nice. It's very smooth operation. It's just, it's not too fast now. That's quite good. Uh, ignore the ripple that's uh, happening with the ambient lighting here. It's under a fairly low level LED light with not much smoothing. But yeah, that's quite a smart little effect. I might put that out in the garden. I wonder how it will stand up to the weather. I guess there's only one way to find out.